What's up guys, Jordan here, and the team asked me to dress up like a doctor and create a go high level YouTube video. And what? I'm not a doctor and I'm definitely a HubSpot guy, so I figured I would show you the quickest way to export leads from Go High Level into another platform. I'm only joking, guys. Go High Level is an incredible platform, an incredible CRM, and here at Close Doctor, we are CRM agnostic. Today, we'll deep dive the huge benefits of using Go High Level surveys to increase the click through rate, capture better data, and even show you a few cool tricks to increase your booking rate. Why listen to me? Well, after hundreds of CRM implementations and millions of dollars through my CRM systems, I have learned a few things along the way. This channel is where me and my team breaks that down and shares some of these insights with you so that you can have a more profitable business. If you're struggling to produce the results that you want in your sales process, go ahead and click the link in the description below to schedule a time to talk with me or someone on my team and we'll be able to point you in the right direction. All right, let's dive in. Go high level forms. I know I was making some jokes earlier about go high level forms and you know the best way to use go high level is to export your leads to HubSpot, but that simply isn't true, right? And again, here at Close Doctor, we are CRM agnostic. So we're gonna show you exactly how to get the most out of forms inside of go high level and why they're better than using other things like type form or Google Forms or Jot Form, whatever you wanna be using, and how it's ultimately gonna make you more money in your company and allow you to do things more easily. So one of the best things about Go High Level is one, it's made for agencies, right? So it has a lot of marketing built into the CRM. So you're able to really do both. So if you have a sales team focused mentality, Go High Level might not be the best option. But if you have a agency or marketing component to yours, and that is a majority of what you do, then it may make sense. So when we come into forms, there's forms and then there's surveys. And there's a big difference between the two. Forms should only be used for opt-ins and then surveys should be used for any type of like application. And we're actually gonna talk about surveys today. So I know I've been saying forms, but surveys is what I wanna talk about. When we come into surveys, we have different types of surveys. And when we come into, let's say this inner circle qualification survey, we have the option to create multiple slides. Now it's a little different because in type form or drop form or whatever, it may be just a question, but these are slides. So these are like phases of your actual survey. So when you're setting this up, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna create your slides. Now on the slide, you can click right here on the slide and then you can edit this information, right? So we can change the title, we can change the subtitle and then we can change what properties are displayed here. When we click on your name, we have on the right hand side, the label, the placeholder, the short label and then the query key, okay? And we can choose to requirement or not. Same thing with phone, very similar. We do wanna enable country picker, right? That's one of the benefits of using this over something like Google Forms because Google Forms just doesn't have the date picker. And then obviously email, again, we can require what we want. And that is the first slide. What we want to do is click this little plus icon right here to add a slide. And now this is where we can start adding our other information into the slide. When we click on this here, what, what we want to do is add a survey element here on the left hand side. So if we were adding a new question to this slide, I would click on add element on this left hand side. Now in here, it has a bunch of quick add elements, which is really nice because it has most of what you would typically need. Capture, CAPTCHA, check boxes, multi drop down, select, website field, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty much has everything you need. We also have the option to add custom fields. So that one's really cool. We can come in here and we can add and create any custom fields that we want directly in here. Now the cool part is, is they're already tied into the CRM. So if you use something like Typeform and you put a question on there, well now you have to fire it back off to your CRM to be able to have it in alignment. So this is something you can do with HubSpot as well, but I believe the forms in here are better than the HubSpot forms. They're just simpler, they're easier to build, and you actually have more optionality. Now that brings me to the right-hand side of the slide here. So you can see that this is a custom field that was created, and we have a lot of different options. We have label, placeholder, short label, query key, required logic, or sorry, required, and then we have the logic. And the logic makes us stupid simple, okay? So we click on this, and you can either go to one of the other slides if they answer that question a certain way or in general. And then you can also disqualify immediately or after submit. So it's really, really nice. So, hey, if they answer the question this way, we can send them to a specific slide or just disqualify them after the submit, whatever we want. It just makes it so simple, guys. 
and this is why go high level, a lot of people love it. It's stupid, simple, and easy to set up. When we click on this, we also have an options tab right here where we can adjust any of our answers that we previously had entered in into here. We can also enable calculations and change that if we want. So we can add values to those answers and create that. Lots of different optionality. Now, if we continue to scroll down, you can see different questions here. And again, we can see that we have logic set up for each of these. So it's, it's really, really nice that it is just simply right inside of there. Then another feature that you will see is spread column. So if we want to add and maybe split this into two columns, just some, some nice little functionality in here that a lot of other platforms don't have, especially innately inside of the system instead of having to go outside to Typeform or something. Typically, I prefer Typeform, but um, yeah. Now, if you click in this top right-hand corner, you have styles and options, which means we have styles, themes, and options, and we have multiple different things that we can do here. We can actually add footer. We can change the layout. We can change the color and background of this. We have agency branding that we can turn on automatically. If you have your agency branding in there, you got a themes section and then options. Now on submit, we can tell it what to do. We can send a message. We can order confirmation we can open URL and we can send them to whatever you know, URL we want. If they disqualify, we can tell them exactly what we want. So what is the message? Where are they actually being sent to? Or are we just letting them know that they're not qualified? Again, here, disqualify immediately, disqualify on submit, different different things here. Facebook pixel ID, this allows you to put your Facebook pixel onto the actual survey and get data out of it. You can also choose what events are being fired. So page view or submit application. So really, really nice there. And then we have a bunch of different like preferences, if you will, or survey settings. So we have one question at a time. We have sticky contact, which pre-populates their contact information. We have auto navigation, scroll to top, use G GDPR compliant font, enabling time zones, sticky contact. Oh, these are in here twice for some reason. That's odd. <laughs> and then we have a time zone. Lastly, we have footer HTML. So you can actually edit the footer and insert custom code in there if you want to. Really holistically looking at go high level forms and the optionality. It is right up there with the best of the best when it comes to forms. It is simple, it's easy to use, and it's directly in your CRM, which is a huge, huge benefit, especially for all of you in the high ticket space that do a lot of different applications and things like that. So go ahead and check out go high level. If you've never used go high level and you want to use go high level, you can click link to set up an account and get a trial and get going. You can also schedule a time to speak with me or someone on my team. If you like to talk about if go high level makes sense for you in the first place. And if you might be or should be using something like close.com or HubSpot really depends on your use case, but we can always point you in the right direction. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like subscribe and comment below with your biggest takeaway. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.